it looks like we are now being live streamed to YouTube. So welcome to the Aligned Ambition Show. I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You Business. And if you're a woman starting or growing your online heart-centered business or wanting to do things differently, do you feel icky about manipulative marketing tactics and are ready to align your business with your ethics, values, and life goals, then stick around for this conversation. Today, I have with me Haley Wheeler. Haley is an innovator, pioneer in the field of emotional and mental health with a proven success with her Emotion Mind Dynamic six-step process, which I hope to hear about. Haley delivers high-energy keynote presentations and workshops that challenge audiences to maximize emotional and mental performance to increase the bottom line. Haley sheds light on the power of harnessing and connecting emotions with your mind for peak performance in business, sports, and life. She does this by getting to the emotional root of mental health challenges for long-term well-being, reducing sickness, absence, and increasing presenteeism. Presenteeism. <laughs> so welcome, Haley. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Oh, well, thank you. Um, before we get to me asking questions about the Emotion Mind Dynamic Six-Step Process, um, can you tell us a little more about yourself and how you ended up doing what you're doing? So I am first and foremost a mum to four children. I have a 22, 19, 17 and 14 year olds. They're all growing up really quickly. Um, I accidentally wrote a book in 2012. It was supposed to be a trifle leaflet and I just kept writing 160 odd pages. And in 2015, I found myself in the depths of depression. And at the same time, I realised that my son, who was then 11, had been born with anxiety. And my battle became about saving him first and helping him go from eight to nine panic attacks a day to nothing. He hasn't had anything in seven years now. And then it was my turn to get better. And I think when, when you've been in that dark place the passion to help people out of that dark place, it just doesn't go away. And it, it's been amazing. Today has been really amazing, actually, because I've had a load of um, testimonials from people who I've worked with a while back and they've just come back and said, this is what you've done for us. And, and that is why I do what I do, because people's lives change as a result. Yeah, yeah. And I think as women, that's why we do what we do right we want to help people that's why we show up and so our life experience is the the best way to do that so maybe tell me a little bit about your emotion mind dynamic six-step process that's a mouthful um and it's like a highlight of that so we can go from there yeah. so for me it's all about developing the person from the inside out we do a lot of external learnings so we do a lot of learning in school and edu education and academia but very rare do we learn about who we are and that really what emotion mind dynamic is all about it's about you my, my kind of motto is self-knowledge is a superpower so it's really about understanding how you work how you operate and alongside that journey, the main thread is emotional processing, expressing and releasing, which doesn't happen in many therapies. It doesn't happen in coaching. It doesn't happen in mentoring. So being able to release emotions is such a big part of, of mental health as well. And yet we're not doing it. We're not doing it as a common practice. Oh, it's so interesting you say that. We are just now hosting an embodiment challenge. So we're, I think today was day 25 of our 28 day challenge and getting women to tap into their body and feel where these traumas are so that they can start to remove them. That is, that is so amazing. The synchronicities that, that show up, right? It's just, just amazing. So when you think about we talk about women in business and what they need to do to, you know, move forward. And that healing aspect is a big part of it. And you, you um, coach women in business. And so how would you best help them with the tools that you have? Like, what are some of the things that they, they could use to help, help themselves move forward in their business? I have a, a coaching model that really does work for everything so not just business but for parenting for when you're stuck in a challenge when you're procrastinating that for me is is integral it, again it's about understanding you how you work how your internal patterns are 
because we just we just don't do it. We we've spent time. All of us have spent time trying to figure out what business is all about, whilst nobody is understanding what we are all about. So how are we supposed to run our businesses? So I would use my coaching model. And I would give them that tool. So I have two versions of it. I have a reflective tool and a planning tool. Mm -hmm. So the reflective tool is kind of your foundation. Let's figure out what's going on. And then the planning tool is changing whatever you choose to change. Now, it does mean a level of self-awareness, which not all of us want to know everything about ourselves. Um, but it's so big a thing to have. You know, we, we focus on external stuff. Let's focus on us as business owners, as as women, as mums, as as all those roles that we play in our lives as well, alongside being business owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, th and that's a big part of being a woman in business is that you don't get to just choose to do the one thing. Right. And you often see in our society, a man starts a business and that's his sole focus. He doesn't have to worry about anything else. But that doesn't happen for us. We have children, we have parents that, you know, are getting older, we have other responsibilities, we have a home to keep up. And the expectation is if we start a business, that we're going to still do all of those things. We don't get to just drop them all and do the one thing. And so it is a huge part of why it is so much work and so much personal work for women in business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough, isn't it? You know, it can be a lonely place as well in business, particularly for, for women who are doing all those other things because you get stuck at home sometimes or you get stuck in the office and you don't see many people. And that alone can be really isolating. And business is tough enough anyway. Add all those additional roles. It can be a real challenge. Yeah, it really can be. One of the reasons that we have the, our, our mastermind is set up with a lot of work alongs, right? And it's because we then can come together as our solopreneurs. We work together. We we know the things that we we need to do because each person needs to do those, right? And so we come together to do that and it's it really works out well for us. And when we think about mental health and what role it plays in having all of these roles, right? All of these things to do. What are some of the maybe the biggest pitfalls you've seen for women in, in business. It, it is that juggling of everything and trying to keep everything in the air and feeling like we have to, that pressure of, and, I, and I've heard this saying, it's a horrible saying, you should parent like you don't work and work like you don't parent. But that's not possible. You know, if you're putting that pressure on yourself to be everything to everyone, that is a massive that has a massive impact on your mental health it has a big impact on your emotional health and it has a big impact on how you run your business and how you parent and how you're in your relationship so it really is about i don't like balancing things i like to integrate things so if we can integrate family and business life more sort of cohesively all the better but while we're continuously doing this balancing act we are struggling, we are heading for maybe burnout, we're procrastinating, we're trying to figure out how many different things we have to do on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, and that's a big part of it. And I've found that, you know, this very masculine energy world that we live in, and and then we get taught things like we must be constantly producing, we, you know, work nine to five or more, right? It's more, never less. And, and so the women I know that come into my mastermind, it's like, um, well, I have to be working all the time and I, I, I just burnt out from all the things, right? And you don't need to be working all the time. If you work strategically, you don't need to be working all the time. And you can work around your schedule. It doesn't need to be nine to five. You can work whatever hours work for you. And we need to start changing some of that thinking around how we show up in the world because it doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for us. Yeah, I, I think that one of the things that we talk about st strategy and, and being strategic, that can be quite a challenge when you are dealing with so many things. You know, being strategic at home, being strategic in your business can be hard because we don't always learn the skills to do that either. We usually, I, I would say men and women, but we go into business to do what we love. All the business side of it really 
feels irrelevant until it's not. And then it becomes a pressure to learn all those things, to put the foundations in place. And I wish I could see more support services, particularly for women, but for men as well, where it all, where you start, you lay the foundations from the start rather than getting six months, a year, two years, three years in and thinking, I don't know how to do the business plan. I don't know how to be strategic. And then have it to find people to support you with that. If we had that to begin with, I think it would make life a little bit easier. Yeah. I mean, that would take me to, you know, how our school systems work. And, you know, they become just glorified babysitting services. My partner's a teacher, so I um, I have an understanding of what's going on. And, you know, we are not brought into the world with the skills or raised into this world with the skills that we need to excel, personally excel, not excel for somebody else, but personally excel, you know, mental health skills and um, entrepreneur skills, if that's what we want, or creative skills, which you need in everything. We're not, we're not taught those things. We're taught produce for someone else. We're taught sit still and be quiet. All of these things that don't work for most people. And then we wonder why we have such a mental health breakdown, right? Because we're so disconnected from ourselves. We're so disconnected from each other. And it's such an important thing to bring back, bring back. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you do um, to help your women, um, you know, work through some of these things? So I really am about going deep. There's no point dealing with a problem at surface level, which tends to happen. I see a lot of surface level coaching, mental health coaching, even therapy is is a, is surface level. So for me, it's about going to the emotional impact. And when you start to operate from that perspective of trying to understand what's the emotional impact of this thing I'm going through, because there's that's what's holding you either stuck or stopping you from from doing what you need to do. But we don't talk about the emotional stuff. We talk about, we do talk about mental health now, but we we talk about what what we're going through, what we've been through. So we kind of try and unpick the, again, the extra external sort of problems. We unpick those, but we need to understand what's the emotional impact on me? What do I need to do with these emotions? How do they make me feel? How do I how do I respond? How do I behave? What are the actions I'm taking as a result? How am I thinking? What's my self-talk? And then you start to let them go. And we it's the releasing part. But you know, we spend so much time, maybe so I don't know if you drive, but when you drive, you know how the car works. But you de- you unless you're a mechanic, you don't know how the engine works. And we're a little bit like that. We know how we work, we know how we you know, do things, how we run a business to some extent, but we don't know the internal pieces that are that are working as well. And we need to understand them to keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's true. We 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 take the path of least resistance, right? So the basics that we need, and then no one tells us we need anything else. So we're not going to go looking for anything else until it breaks right? That's when you go find a mechanic or that's when you go and look it up on Google to find how to fix it is when it breaks. And we we can't be waiting that long, right? We're seeing it too, we're seeing too much of it. We're seeing too much of it. And yeah. if people are not maybe completely ready to go deep, <laughs> what are some first steps they can take? I'm a go deep person, so I get it. But uh, what are some first steps that they can take? I think taking control of understanding what emotions you're feeling. Business is going to throw some emotions at you. It's going to throw loads of problems, loads of challenges. And it's understanding where you're at 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 any given time. Am I happy? Am I sad? Am I stressed? Am I anxious? Am I worried? And it isn't something we do. It It feels like society thinks emotions are a pain in the neck. But actually, if you think about it, how many times a day do you say, this makes me feel angry, this makes me feel sad, this makes me feel frustrated. But yet we we kind of minimise emotions. So maybe journaling is a good way, you know, journal morning and night. And also become really intentional in what you want to do. And one of the things I've been working with the group is how do I want to feel at the end of my day? When I get into bed, how do I want to feel? 
then you start okay so what do i need to do to feel like that tonight and actually it starts changing your emotional state how you're thinking how you're acting and behaving and those actions that you're taking because you become a little bit more focused on right if i want to feel happy calm when i go to bed i need to make sure that i'm not overloading myself overwhelming myself i need i need to make sure that if i'm doing a list it's a short list and it's not sort of 300 things long that I feel I need to tick off today. It's realistic. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the end of the day and maybe today you're not quite as calm and happy as you want to be. But over the next few weeks, the more you practice that, you get to be that at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's a really good point, right? It's the practice. And we just keep doing the little bits, the little bits, and eventually it becomes a habit, right? When we yeah. do that. And, and yeah, I love that idea of focusing on how you want to feel at the end of the day so that you can make a plan. And then you can also catch yourself, right, as you go through your day. Well, is this going to contribute to how I want to feel at the end of the day? Or is this going with it or against it? Oh, I love that. I love that idea. Yeah. That, and that seems like a very simple, doable, like anyone can start with that, right? And then if you want to go deeper... <laughs> <laughs> there are so many more things you can do and I'm sure Haley can help you with that. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, now I did see that you had a free gift for our listeners. Did you want to uh, tell us a little bit about that? It's a, I believe a one-to-one -one call. Yeah. 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 Please do get in touch to have that one-to-one. -one. You can discuss anything you want to and we, you will walk away with a particular tool or a couple of tools that you can use for that challenge or for that particular situation that you bring. And I've just put the link into the chat. So if anybody uh, wants that, we'll also put it in the, in the show notes afterwards. And where can they find you? Where can they find you? Well, they can find me on all social media platforms. If you're on LinkedIn, I'm there. If you're on Instagram, I'm there. I'm on TikTok as well. So if you if you search for Hayley T. Wheeler, I will come up on a lot of different platforms. Yes, <laughs> so I did see that when I checked. When I was checking your <laughs> links, I was like, yep, there she is. There she is. That's the one. So uh, and we'll have those links there for you as well. And I, I do want to thank you for coming because I think this is such an important topic for women in business. Well, anyone really, but women in business and looking after our own mental health and also understanding what part it plays in how successful we can be in our business. Is there any final thoughts you have before we go today? I always give this tip because I think people forget you, no matter what other roles or responsibilities you have in your life, you are the most important person in your world. Even if you're a parent, if you don't look after yourself the way you need to look after yourself, no one is going to step up and parent your children, run your business, be the partner that you want to be. So if you put yourself on top of that priority list at least once a day or once a week, if you really are that stretched, you'll start to see that that's going to change how you are with the rest of your family, with your business. But we've got a habit of putting everything else on top. Let's put you up there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I talk about it a lot in our in our mastermind about self care and how are you looking after yourself and and you know what are what things are you doing for you and I I don't mean just spa days I mean like what what are you doing that feeds your soul that helps you move forward Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Haley. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And to our listeners, uh, if you're a woman interested in aligning your heart-centered business with your ethics, values, and life goals, join our Aligned Business Building Mastermind with accountability, like-minded women who become your business colleagues to share the journey with, resources, and trainings. And you can get 90% off your first 30 days. And so for the cost of a latte, you can begin to align your business. And I will have the link in the chat, and it will also be in the show notes afterwards. So thank you, everyone. And just put that there for people.